Hello guys and welcome to episode 13 in my Godot C Sharp How To series. About a month ago, I ran a poll here on my community tab where we asked what kind of tutorial you guys would like me to create next. And we have six votes here. And the result of the poll is that you guys wanted me to make another enemy AI tutorial here. So that's what we're going to do today. And we're going to make a simple floater that's going to go between the walls and it's going to look like this. And I'm going to turn back. All right. So let's get started. As you can see, I have prepared in advance. We have a simple level here. And what we're going to do now is that we're going to create a new folder in the settings folder. So right click here, click on new folder, type in enemies, click on OK. Right click the enemies folder, click on new folder, and type in floater and click on OK. You can now right click the floater folder, click on new scene, and call this guy floater, and click on OK. Click on 2D scene, rename this guy to floater, right click the floater node, click on change type, and make this a kinematic body 2D instead. This guy here, and click on change. Right click the floater, click on that child node, and find the collision shape 2D, click on that guy, and click on create. Click on shape here and click on new rectangle shape 2D. Next, click on the floater node again. Click on add child node and find the animated sprite. This guy here, click on create. Go to frames here and click on new sprite frames. Then down here, right click the floater folder, click on new folder, type in GFX. Next, open this guy in the file manager. And I'm going to copy in the graphics here. As usual, you'll find the source code and the graphics and everything you need on my GitHub page. The link is in the description. We can now close this guy. If I click here, we will now have the floater right here. Click on the sprite frames again. Then rename this guy to fly. Click on add frames from a sprite sheet. And go to scenes, enemies, floater, GFX. And click on the floater and click on open. It's going to be 2 in the vertical and 12 on the horizontal axis. I'm going to click these sprites like this and click on add 12 frames. Next, click here on new animation, rename this guy to turn, and click on add frames from a sprite sheet again, click on the floater and click on open. I'm going to grab these frames like so. Click on add 4 frames and this guy should be at the end, like so. Click on the fly and change the speed to 15 FPS instead. And make sure the turn is not looping. All right. We have now set up all the nodes we need for the floater. We're going to right click the floater, click on attach script, and make sure this is a C sharp script, and click on create. Here at the top, we are first going to add some variables. We're going to have the speed for the floater, we're going to have the max speed for the floater, and we have a Boolean here if the floater is turning or not. And we have the velocity of the floater. And inside of the render method here, we're going to get the reference to the animated sprite node. And now that we have our code, we can go back to the editor quickly. I'm going to click on animated sprite. I'm going to go to node. And under the signals, we're going to double click on the animation finished. And I'm going to rename this to a bit more C sharp standard here, like so. Double click this guy, right click, and click on copy. And we're going to connect this guy to the floater script that we just created. So click on connect here. And in here, just type in private, void, and paste this guy in, like so. And what we're going to do here is that whenever the sprite animation is finished, we're going to set the animations to be fly instead. And we're going to add a new method in here called the reset turning if needed. So if the floater is turning at the moment, then we're going to reset the floater velocity to zero. I'm going to flag that the floater is no longer turning. I'm going to plug this guy in right here. Next, we're going to scroll down a bit. And in here, we're going to have the update move function. So what we do in here is that we are checking if the animation is flipped. That means we are going left. And we know this because in our animated sprite, for the fly animation, it's set to go to the right. So when we flip it, it's going to go to the left. So back to the code. So if we are going to the left, and we are not turning at the moment, 
Then we're just going to speed up the floater. We're just going to add one to the velocity all the time. Let me check here if the floater has passed this maximum speed to the left. And if so, we're going to cap it here to the max speed. And we will do the exact same thing, but to the right. And finally, in this method, we're going to run the move and slide method to move the floater with Godot's inbuilt physics. Next, we have the following method called turn on collision. And here we're going to run the get slide count, which is a very confusing name. Let's right click this guy and go to definition. You can read here that this returns the number of times the body collided and changed direction during the last call. So let's go back. So what we actually do is to get the number of collisions here. Then we check if the floater has more than one collision and is not turning. If so, we're going to set turning to true. Then we will play the turning animation and we will flip the sprite. And finally, we're going to override the process method here with the following. In here, we run the update move method to move the floater and we run turn on collision. So this is all the code we need to make a floater that goes between the walls. So press Ctrl S to save and let's go back to the go.engine. Then press Ctrl S for the floater. Go to the main scene, right click the main scene and instance child scene. Click on the floater and click on open. We can now place this guy down here. Next, we can right click the floater and we can click on duplicate here. Make two of them. Put one up there and one in the middle here as well. Press Ctrl S to save the main scene and click on play. And click on select current here for the main scene. And right now they're not flapping their rings, so close this guy. Let's go to the floater scene. Click on the inspector, and if we zoom in now, and click on playing here, you see that we are flying. So by clicking playing here, you can turn the playing on and off for the animation. We go to the main scene and click on play again. As you can see now, there's a lot of overlap here. So we can close this guy down and fix that quickly. So go to the floater. Click on the collision here and we can move it below. And we can drag this a bit more to the back as well. Something like that. And click on play. That looks a lot better. And it's going to bounce in here as well. And turn nicely. All right. This concludes how you make a floater that goes between two walls. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and see you in the next video. Bye for now.